Alrighty, YouTube, another one of Kip's clips. So if he's listened to the show last night, he's would have known that I've been looking into a lot of the um, symbolism in and around Glasgow, and particularly Glasgow, uh, George Square in Glasgow. Now, it's the headquarters of um, the Glasgow Corporation, or otherwise known as Glasgow City Council. Um, but if you go and check your history books, You'll see that for the vast majority of its history, it was um, out there and open, and it was known as the uh, Glasgow Corporation. Now, this is the coat of arms of Glasgow Corporation. People say it's the, the coat of arms of Glasgow. Here's the wee booklet that I got when I was on the tour. The armorial insignia of the city of Glasgow. <clears throat> Um, you've got St Mungo, the tree with the bell, the fish with the ring and the robin. Um, I'll go on to tell you. Oh, now, bear in mind with Masonic symbolism, or the doctrine behind the Masons' symbolism. Um, I mean, what was it I heard the other day when people talk about Illuminati and all these sort of a symbolism? A lot of it's... OTO, I think it is, symbolism. I'm not that well researched, so take that one for what it's worth. <coughs> now, the reason I bring this up, <clears throat> I'm doing a lot, of, I'm coming across so much fascinating, fascinating information, so I'm stuck to a 15 minute limit, so I decided to put it out in small little chunks of all the information I'm finding. So here's the Glasgow coat of arms, you've got the fish, now the fish, can you can trace that back to being a pagan symbol for the, the, the feminine. <clears throat> um, yeah, go and look into that yourself. <laughs> uh, you can trace that back to paganism and before paganism, the fish, the egg, it's always represented, the feminine, the womb, the, the woman. Um, look at your Starbucks emblem, that's the the, 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 the the feminine. You think that's our arms, it's meant to be our legs parting and they're fish-like. That's the same symbolism as the fish rep here, rep the fish representing the, f the feminine. <coughs> You've all, now, <coughs> the reason I decided to try and break this down a wee bit <coughs> um, was because I was checking through this. It's an amazing resource. I'll leave it down below. <coughs> it's a list of all the... Um, let me just mark this place so I can get back to it. It's a list of all the... Um, numer numeric list of Masonic lodges in Scotland. Uh, some people find this fascinating, like myself, some won't, but um, I just, I, I've not even looked through them all yet, but just look at the, the, the badges the, the for the lodges, and I find it fascinating, and that's the reason I wanted to um, bring this in. Now, just a few ones, obviously, you've got the compass and sex square with the G in the middle. There you've got a representation of the, the pyramid. On this one, you've got a pyramid as well. Now, this is the one that caught my attention. At first glance, I was like, well, okay, right, you've got your, your towers there, uh, with your Solomon's Temple in the middle, the triangle. But what you've also got in the middle of this, now let me just see if I can blow this up a wee bit for you. And it's very unique, it's the Glasgow, City of Glasgow coat of arms. Now, obviously, this is um, Lodge, Glasgow, Cowinnan, Glassford Street, so this is this is literally... Um, in fact, let me just do this for you. Um, there's George Square, there's the City Chambers with the coat of arms, the Glasgow Corporation, there's um, Trades Hall Glasgow, uh, just round here. That's where the Masonic Lodge is, who's... Have I lost it now? Where the hell is it? Who's emblem... Who's Glasgow's coat of arms turns up on their lodge. The only thing that appears to be missing, missing is the fish in the ring. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if the feminine... Uh, well, sort of found that interesting. So, um, I'll leave a link for this down below there. You can see the old C&I, what, what lodge is that? It's in Hamilton. Uh, now, the reason they say Lodge Hamilton Kilwinning <clears throat> is the number zero lodge, the... the, the uh, call it Mother Lodge, Lodge Mother Culbinning number zero, dated 1598. 
Mason, uh, Freemasonry was at its peak during the, now I get this mixed up, so I'm going to say the 1700s and 1800s. <laughs> Um, so that'd be the that'd be the seventeenth and eighteenth century, I believe. I'm, I'm rubbish at that. Um, <clears throat> so I'll leave this link below. You can go and have a wee look through all. I mean, fascinating. You get the the, the, the twin towers, the, the double tower um, theme all the time. There's your twin towers. Now, if you go through Glasgow, I mean, like literally, you, you can tell the buildings the masons built back in the day, because <laughs> they've all got the two towers symbolism there. Um, and I mean, people are, oh, it's just decorative. It's not, it's the gang sign. I'm not saying that, oh, look, there's a cracking one with a tree in the middle. And the <laughs> tree of life. <clears throat> Very strong, Kabbalistic meaning. But of course, let me tell you, let me tell you, this is the light side, let me tell you the light side of the meanings they give you for the the Glasgow coat of arms. Uh, where the hell is it now? Did I not have a picture up for the Glasgow coat of arms? Oh Jesus, I thought I did. It's up here. Right there, sorry. Getting mixed up there, where I was. Um, right, so they say the bird represents um, com com commemorates the wild robin that um, Saint Sheriff, uh, Saint uh, Saint Mungo's old master tamed. It was accidentally killed by some of his disciples who blamed Saint Mungo. He took the dead bird into his hands and prayed over it. Whereupon it was restored to life and th flew chirping to its master. <clears throat> so that's what re that's the story that we're told to swallow that that bird represents. The tree is now an oak, but it started in the legend as a hazel branch. As a boy in the monastery, Mungo was left in charge of the holy fire in the refract in, in the refractory. He fell asleep, and some of the other boys, being envious of him, put out the fire. When he awoke and found what had happened, Mungo broke off some frozen branches from a hazel tree and caused them to burst into flame by praying over them. The bell may have been given to St Mungo by the Pope and there is no defined information as to how uh, uh, he obtained it. At any rate, in the 15th century, St Mungo's bell had become notably... Um, had become notable institution in Glasgow. In 1450, John Stuart, the first provost of Glasgow, left, as he did many others, an endowment to have the bell tolled throughout the city to call in inhabitants to pray for his soul. The city treasure accounts for 1578 show an entry of two shillings for one tong to Sanch Mungouste's bell. But the ultimate fate of the bell is unknown. A replacement was purchased by the magistrates in 1641 and the bell still exists in the People's Palace. Now the language that is getting used here as well is all very Roman Catholic. All, ro all roads lead to Rome. Do bear in mind as well, you've got your Pope with the fish and you've got St Mungo turning up here with the fish on his head. People might think it's just a hat, but it represents the fish. It's a fish mouth if you look at it. And here's an interesting... Glasgow let it flourish, and then there's the two towers, and you get the tree of life. Funny how all the symbols seem seem to be transferable between the Glasgow coat of arms and uh, the Masons. Uh, the fish, I know that I can remember the story, I don't need to read this. The fish, um, what was that? I think it was a princess. Ah, well, St Mungo caught a fish that was meant to have swallowed a ring that a princess needed to stop her getting beheaded or something along those lines, right? So that's the story you are told. But people who are more into their symbology than me, a lot greater than myself, will be able to tell me a lot more about this than I can. But let's just have a wee sh quick shifty. How long have I went? Nine minutes, right? Just a wee quick shifty through these and see if anything else of interest particularly pops out. Um, well there's the double towers, there's the tree and the all seeing eye, it's number 17, that's um, that's in Lith 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 Lithgow, that's through in Edinburgh, 
Now, there you go, you can't get much more Masonic than that. It's got the checkered floor, it's also got the pillars and the G and compass. Now, do bear in mind, if you, if, if you take the compass and set square as just um, straight lines, you connect those straight lines, you have the Star of David. Oh, look at this one, which says the Grand Lodge of Scotland, Lodge Cooper of Fife. Um, just a lovely big ram's head, you know, no no Baphomet to be seen here, 1736, that was established, that one. Um, and it's funny how there's lots of saints, it's named after lots of saints, Catholic saints. Funny that, isn't it? Hey, but here, there's a Protestant Catholic divide, you better believe it, keep warring, keep warring amongst yourselves. Um... Hmm, there's an old coin. Can't really mu make much out of that. But again, uh, even going look into the Knights Templar, Templar symbology, they use it. Is it a white knight? One knight? Or is it two knights on a horse, I believe? There's the three towers. Now, another note, another interesting thing that got pointed out to me not too long ago that I was unaware of. A lot of the times, I mean, I'll, I'll go back up and look at this and you'll see it. <clears throat> when a lot of the times when they're representing the two or the three towers, it's the same representation. Now think about it this way as well. In architecture, if you have a window and you put two pillars in front of that block in one, one window, what do you have there? Do you have two pillars or do you have three pillars of light protruding? Again, you need to think about the way the, mis the, way the symbolism works. See, symbolism works, you need to be told the signs and concepts behind the symbols um, in a sense that that's why like a square to a lot of people is just a square but if you can think three dimensionally then I, they even take it um, is it hyper dimensionally or hyper cube or whatever you can you can pinpoint a million and one different three dimensional spaces just inside a square that's where they see that's why ge geometry is seen as the grand architect of the universe um, right, but what I was going to say about the three towers, they're never, they're never the same height. <clears throat> Sometimes they will be actually, That's a lot of the time you'll see they're different heights. Twin towers of America, oh they were the same height weren't they? No they weren't, they were all three different different heights. Um, and if you can see there, the three towers on that are different heights. Let me just go back up. Orkney, there we go. Um, let me see some three pillar symbolism and see if they're the same height. Now, <clears throat> to me, those definitely look the same height, no doubt about it. Um, I would say the one on the left is slightly taller. I'd say that it's slightly out. Let's see if there's any one, one, uh, ones with more obvious ones. There, you can clearly see on that one, the right tower is higher. There's your star symbolism there as well. Um, I don't know if that's a good one to take. And uh, and look at that. Go and look at the uh, Aberdeen's coat of arms, right? Aberdeen's coat of arms is the three towers in it as well. Just something that popped into my mind there, is because. Uh, right. Oops. Uh, well, I think there you could safely say the one on the left is higher, but keep that in mind, bear that in mind when you're looking at the, t the, the, the symbolism of the two towers. A lot of the time you'll see they're sl one slightly taller than the other. Um, now that's me into 13 minutes. See, I, could, I haven't even dipped into half the symbolism in this page. Oh, there's ones there. With <laughs> burns on it, there's a picture of burns on it. Um, that's in Dumfries, well, Dumf well, Dumfries, I wonder why they would have a picture of Burns. That's right, he's a very, very famous mason, uh, and he stayed in Dumfries for a bit. <clears throat> uh, right, well, I'm going to leave it there, I'll leave a link for this down below, you can go and check it out. Uh, there's a single tower, to either side of it. There's the two towers again. Very hard to judge, but I would say again, you can tell the left one is slightly, it's ever so slightly off. And again, it's all about the geometry and being able to have the eye to spot it. It's the, the, the secret and the symbolism. Um, oh, cool. Um, right, well, I'll leave it there because I'm running out of time. So thumbs up, share it on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All the links will be down below. 
All my links down below, good way to keep in touch if they shut down the channel. Take the radio show link, me and Kev gone live every Sunday uh, from 6pm UK catches.